Hey, what's up, guys? So I've talked a lot about Skatersoft NP3. I love this game. I love playing it. I love its flow. I love the fact that I can use, you know, these little dice and uh, play around with them and stuff. But there are a couple things about this game that I don't like. And I'm going to show you one of the most frustrating things about this game. And uh, I want you to take a look at this and sort of figure or see for yourself kind of what's going on and what I've had to jury rig uh, to jerry rig together. So. In case you have been wondering, I don't use real-life uh, lineups in my games. There is a good reason for this. We'll talk more about this later. The biggest reason for this, though, is because I want the replay to be an entity uh, to itself. If you know a lot about historical lineups in baseball history, you know that there was a lot of stuff that would happen because the team was totally out of the pennant race. I don't want to be forced to use bizarre lineups um, with a team that's in the pennant race because it's realistic, because it might not actually be realistic. Instead, I want control. I want to know the players myself. I want to be able to control who's hitting where based upon whatever it is that I want to base it upon. That's the reason why I use my own lineups. I use it for this replay. I've used it for the um, Diamond Mind replay. I'm going to use it for every replay that we do from here on out because I believe that the replayer needs to really take control of this. We're not just generating box scores. We're playing the game. We're trying to be the manager. That's what the old uh, app um, advertisement said. You are the manager. So let's go take a look and see what's going on here. So this is my screen view. And... Um, I'll show you a couple of little tools that I use. So um, I'll update this one here first for the next game. This is a copy of the schedule that I use. I've shown you this before. I need to change this up because BRO and BSN keep getting mixed up in my mind. I played this huge game between Philadelphia and Boston um, for this day before I suddenly realized that I was using the wrong teams and had to redo it. That was embarrassing. <laughs> But uh, I need to work on this a little bit, but this is sort of the schedule that I work through. Why do I use this, you ask? Because when I go over here, I can only have the actual games played schedule. I cannot have the as scheduled schedule. I know from talking with Bill Stafford that there's a reason for that. I know that the way that he created the game has a lot to do with who the player played against in real life and that there are some very, very small, finicky differences that we can talk about. Having said that, it would be really nice to be able to do it the other way so that I don't have to do what I'm about to show you. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to look at the lineups. Um, and uh, this is where stuff becomes really, really frustrating, right? So this is the game that we just played. Look at the lineups here, and I'll show you some of the problems that we have. So if I wanted to put in, like, Buck Herzog, right, who plays what? I can click on this. It'll tell me he plays second base, third base, shortstop, and outfield. Like, I can look at his player card. But from this, I'm not going to know how often he played in one position or the other. Really, I have to go open up Baseball Reference and go take a look at this and take a look at that and take a look at the other. It's a pain in the neck. If I want him in here and I want him to hit there, look, if I get kind of close to the eight spot, uh, it doesn't quite work, does it? It um, kind of doesn't let me over all the way. If I want Bridwell to come up here instead, it'll put him over there on the side. This is the problem with this system. Now, I don't know what uh, programming language this was programmed in. I suspect that it's Visual Basic, um, but um, I don't know that for a fact. What I've had to do in the end, so there's a default lineup, and then there's another lineup I have saved for every team that I call Project, and I've had to do this kind of by hand and be very, very careful about it. You can see the process of putting players into the lineup is hard because you have to get the uh, their player name in at exactly the right spot, and you have to make sure that the position is set up correctly and that the guy's in the right place so you don't have a catcher up to pitch, which did happen to me when I was doing this most recently, right? The other thing you'll notice about the screen, and I'll show it here for Boston as well, is that there's no place to look at for statistics. The only statistics you can see are the ones that are put on the player's card. I know that that's realistic because we're trying to emulate what would happen if you were playing with these cards in real life, right? And you'd have these cards in your hand. You can only see what's on the card unless you are like uh, have a computer right in front of you at the same time. I get it. But it would be really, really nice if I could see how the player's hitting. I mean, I can't see anything about the player at all, how many games he played and stuff like that. You just can't see it. You have to go over here to stats. So I go over here to stats. Let's look at, uh, let's look at the New York Giants. Might as well. And guess what? These are all of the stats that I can see. I can't add anything else to this, right? I would have to, um, you know, like mess around somehow with like an Excel file or something like that 
to be able to generate statistics I'm interested in. So one of the things I do generally, people have asked me about this before, one of the things I do generally in, with these games is I like to um, organize players based upon the OPS, right, on base percentage plus slugging percentage. The reason why is because I'm of kind of the older school of sabermetrics, which says that this is probably the measure that most closely is associated with good things like, you know, WOBA, runs created, offensive war, or whatever it is you want to talk about, right? OPS is a really nice, quick, and, and dirty, and easy way to get a good idea of um, how the player is overall offensively. Is he slugging a lot, and is he getting on base a lot? I can't do that here. I can't create it. I can't have it into the game. The only way I could do this would be to go from team to team and send all the stats to Excel and then mess around with a bunch of spreadsheets, which is not something I want to do when I just want to go through and kind of clean this up really quickly. So what I've had to do is I've had to organize it by on-base percentage, and then I've had to look really closely here and just say, okay, so Jack Honifin, I mean, I don't know what position this guy play. And this is the funny thing, right? I double-click on it, nothing will come up. I can't see his player's card from this screen, right? I'd have to go all the way back over to the lineup screen and then take a look here at the Giants and say, okay, where is Hannafin? Where is he? You know, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, am I even on the right team? I might not be on the right team, right? You can see what the problem is here, though, right? Which is that, like, you know, when I'm looking over at the stats, yeah, it is the right team for the Giants. I don't know what's happened to him. I don't know why he's not showing up anymore, but he's just not. So Bresnahan, then, is going to be the next one who comes up. And as we look over here at my save lineup, Guess what? Roger Bresnahan, who's the catcher, was hitting leadoff, right? And there's a reason for it, right? You can see kind of how this is working and how it is that I have it set up, but it's a really, really annoying system because you have to go from one to the next. So because of that, I have had to create this spreadsheet. And so this is actually for Boston. I'll show you here for New York. I created this spreadsheet at the very beginning with sort of an idea of where I wanted my lineups to be. What I've done with this quite literally is I took the starting players, put them over here, rearranged them according to the lineup with baseball reference opened up over here on the side, did a little bit of comparing, said, is there like a different player on the bench that we could use to start here? Is there some change we should make or not? And then rearranged the lineup depending upon how they were doing in real life right? It's a real pain. The problems that I have here include the fact that I cannot use this to view real life statistics at all, even these basic statistics. I have to keep jumping back and forth to see what I really want to see. It's a mess. It really is a mess, right? I would really like to be able to do everything in one screen instead of having to jump from screen to screen, trying to do a very basic task like change my lineup and have some information as to what can go into my lineup, right? There's another problem with this, which is the pitching rotation. So I've had to create a pitching rotation for every team. I did this a real not good way, right? What I did is I kind of went through here and eyeballed it. <laughs> this is the wrong way to do it. What I really should do is I should use the schedule. I should make individual team schedules so I know exactly what their schedule is going to be coming up. And then I should go through and make the pitching rotation. But instead, I just sort of eyeballed it and guessed, right? And so this might even be a little bit off. But the reason why we have to do this is because in this as played schedule, this is the as played schedule, not the as scheduled schedule. The other problem that we have is that there is really no fatigue system in the game. Now, if we go into the pitching rules, there actually is a fatigue system that goes from game to game, as I recall, but um, it's not really spelled out here, unfortunately for us. And so because of that, um, it becomes, again, really, really complicated, and you have to keep track of your pitchers by yourself instead of sort of keeping track of them based upon what the game would normally call for. Um, it's, a, uh, it's definitely a problem. It's um, actually a really, really big problem. And so what I've done is I've looked at this. I've taken a look at different rest days and stuff and tried to make my best guess as to this. Almost all teams used a four-man rotation in 1908. That's also true, by the way, for 1901. The one big exception that we see in 1908 is actually it's not Iron Joe McGinnity, but it's rather this guy, um, Ed Walsh. So Walsh I have every two days. And you can see here, too, I have other substitution notes as well. I call it substitution ideas, but I mean, whatever, for every game. So I'll put in um, Anderson at left field because he's hitting, or at right field, he's hitting well, better than Ed Hahn for the White Sox. Weaver will catch once so that we don't have the same guy catching every day. Here's Anderson again at right field. And then we reevaluate again as we move forward and then eventually decide, okay, does this guy Anderson get the starting role finally? You know, does it make sense or not? That's kind of the way that I've had to do this. Again, I've had to do a lot of this, you know, sort of uh, jerry-rigging of this stuff because I can't get this 
information here. I can't just stay in one place and get all of this stuff figured out. It really is a shame and it's a pain. I can do it with other games, but for whatever reason with uh, Skeetersoft, I'm not able to do this. I'm not able to just look at one place and get all of the information I need to make my own lineups. Anyway, you might look at this and you might think that that is um, really kind of a finicky point. You might look at this and think, okay, come on, this doesn't really matter that much. You know, you can do this. You're a big boy. You can do this, you know, using these other tools and so on and so forth. I did this for all 16 teams on Friday and it took me um, a little bit over an hour. Um, that's a lot of time to spend on a project uh, that you're doing every in-game week, right? So like every two weeks or so in real life. I would prefer it not to take me an hour to do this. This is very, very frustrating. Most of that time was spent um, messing around with stuff in-game, not actually making the lineup decision. A lot of that time was spent messing around with the lineup system that is constructed in-game. This is one reason why I complain about games that are created using Visual Basic and Windows-only programming languages. We need to grow up. We need to use languages like Python and Rust and languages like that to create these games because they're much more versatile and because you can create systems that actually work better. Honestly, though, this system is so cumbersome and it's so frustrating to use, I would actually almost rather use a text-based system because I can do it faster, as in I have to write like substitute S and then one for like X or whatever, sort of like the old app a DOS game had. Anyway, I'd love to know what your opinion is on this subject. I'm very frustrated with this. I really am, and I think that this should be a lot better. Um, but i um, love to hear what you think and also what experience you have with other games. And yeah, believe me, as we play other games, I'm going to be just as ruthless with them as I have been with this one. Talk to you later. Bye.